Hey guys, it's Alex the Real Mr. Robinson again. So it's been a week since I saw Solo, actually a little more than a week. It's been a full week since my review, but now I think it's full time to talk about the spoiler elements and feature your Stardust reactions as well. But before we get into the actual Stardust reactions, what is Stardust? Stardust is an app where you can download quick 30 second reactions of a movie, TV show, trailer, simulator ride at a theme park, anything that they have in their archive. And you can do it in 30 seconds at the snap of a finger and it's there for the world to see. It's a great tool if you want to try to get into doing movie reviews on YouTube like me and a bunch of other people who are on the app. And it's just a fun community all around. So this video is part of an ongoing partnership with Stardust where I feature a bunch of reactions to whatever the video is going to be about and I pretty much use these as the basis for the points I want to bring up in my spoiler review. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be talking about Solo, I'll be featuring your reactions, but before I do that I want to address the less than stellar box office it had over the weekend. This Memorial Day weekend nonetheless. Huh? It, over three days I think it made around 83 million dollars which on its own is not an opening weekend to really stick your nose up at, but considering that this is a Star Wars movie, and if reports are correct, the most expensive Star Wars movie ever made, that's that's bad. That is a really bad opening weekend, and it's just, maybe, I don't know, it's a little too early to say that it's a bomb, but there was definitely a lot of negative press going in with this movie. Considering all the production trouble that this movie went through, considering that the word of mouth was that it's a fine movie or it's fun, that's the word that I use mainly throughout my entire review and in my own Stardust reaction was fun. But I think with Star Wars, people are wanting to see more. They're expecting more when it comes to Star Wars and then I even hate to bring this up, there was a backlash against The Last Jedi, which for me, it's just a bunch of stupid, loud people that didn't get the movie that they wanted to. I'm sorry, if you didn't like The Last Jedi, that's totally fine, but to say that it's the worst Star Wars movie ever, you're wrong. That That's, no. I mean, okay, no. I can't say you're wrong because, again, it's your own opinion, but Star Wars has suffered through far worse than The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was practically nothing. In fact, it's one of the best Star Wars movies out there. I said it, so sue me. But getting back into Solo, there's definitely a lot of negative press going in with Solo. And unlike The Last Jedi, a lot of the criticisms that people have with this movie, I actually understand completely. I'm like, yeah, I might not feel the same about it as you guys do, but I can completely understand where you're coming from. And this is actually going to be a good segue way into the Stardust reactions, and our first one comes from somebody that I've featured before, IMAX Nick. Solo, a Star Wars story. When they announced that this movie was being made, I questioned why it even needed to exist. Now that I've actually sat down and watched the movie, I still didn't get an answer. This movie just is. It exists for reasons I cannot understand other than money. It is just unfortunate. It is very dull and boring. It drags its feet most of the time. It's fun at times, sure, but overall, it's just a forgettable movie. It's not the best in the Star Wars saga. If you had plans to see this, I'd say lower expectations. Pretty harsh review, considering that it's three stars. That seemed more like a two-star reaction, if anything. But he's very much in line with what I feel. I still like the movie a little better than him, probably, but it's one of these things where you shouldn't really go in with high expectations, considering that it's not part of the saga, it's not going to be a grand epic in the way all the films in the saga were, whether they were good or not is up for debate. Ever since the beginning, I felt like a Han Solo story was just unnecessary because we got his full story throughout four movies. A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and The Force Awakens. He went through several arcs and we saw the character grow. We didn't really need a bunch of origins to his background, which this movie does a lot of that, explaining how he acquired a lot of this stuff. And something like the DL-44, it's like, okay, that's a little cheesy, but where it's 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 there it's quick and now he has his blaster with the millennium falcon it actually plays out a little longer than i thought because the first time han plays against lando he loses because lando is cheating in the same way that short round was cheating against indiana jones in temple of doom with little cards up his sleeve and then the second time at the end of the movie when han played lando again they managed to steal the 
device from his sleeve, and Han won the Falcon fair and square without any sort of cheat at all. So that's neat that Han doesn't acquire the Falcon until the very end of the film, but the one little element that I could not stand at all was why his last name is Solo. Basically, he and Kira are separated on Corellia at the beginning of the film. Solo manages to get away from the Empire's grasp, but Kira is not so lucky, so he decides to join the Empire and try to become a pilot. So he goes up to the recruitment desk and he gives his name and then the Imperial officer I think asks who he's with uh, or what his last name is and Han is just like I'm not with anyone I'm just on my own and then the officer says Solo and that's how he got the name Han Solo and I was just like give me a fucking break that that is no, no. It's still not as bad as Darth Vader built C-3PO, like I said in my review and my Stardust reaction. It's just one of those things where I heavily rolled my eyes rather than going, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm not at all big on a lot of the stuff that they do where they say, and here's how this person got this, or how he got his last name, so... Eh. Alright, the next reaction comes from somebody who... I once again featured on my channel beforehand, uh, Smiling LDS Girl, and she has a much more optimistic view on Solo than I do, and especially more than IMAX Nick. So I think your reaction to this movie depends a lot upon what you want out of a Star Wars movie. I like my Star Wars movies to be pulpy space adventures, and that's why I always liked New Hope the best, and why I like Force Awakens, and I think this is right along those lines. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely about 30 minutes too long. It has a bunch of endings. I think it has characters they, they can't really develop. It has a really annoying droid, and I never really bought that these characters were the old characters, but it was still, I still really enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of fun. So she definitely had a few stuff to criticize, like L3, which I, the jury's still out on that in terms of my own personal opinion, but she made a good point in that your enjoyment is ultimately dependent on how you like your Star Wars movies. For me, I'm actually very open to what Star Wars movies we get because it's a galaxy. It's a galaxy full of endless possible ideas. So if we get a movie that's a heist western, then... Hey, I'm down for that because it adds some variety. Rogue One was a war film. Huh? At, I like Rogue One a lot better than I do Solo, but it being a gritty, dirty war film gave some variety. The prequels, ugh, I mean, they're bad, but at least they were somewhat different from the original trilogy in the sense that they're more political. It doesn't always work out. In fact, it never works out in the prequels. Uh, it worked out more in the Clone Wars than anything, but regardless of that, uh, I'm fine with whatever Star Wars has to do, as long as it's good, and as long as it adds some variety. And while Solo definitely feels a lot different than some of the other Star Wars movies, it just doesn't leave that much of an impression for me. I like the movie, but it's not something that I'm gonna buy the day it comes out on Blu-ray like I did with the last three Star Wars films. So it's just... I don't know, it's just kinda up in the air. Alright, moving on to the next Stardust reaction, which comes from... Minute Movie Pop. I can see why people may have issues with this movie, but they weren't enough for me to take me out of my experience. I had so much fun. I enjoyed L3 so much. She was funny. I loved her line. Equal rights. Everybody was laughing. Rio was another big surprise. I think John Favreau killed it. I wanted to see more of him. I enjoyed watching Han and Chewie meet and develop that relationship we know and love. I'm excited for more solo films. Are you excited for more? Well, she asked a direct question, so I guess I'll answer it on this channel. Not really. I mean, again, I like the movie, but I want to see different things. Uh, I want to see new characters. I want to explore different parts of the galaxy. I want to see a lot of varied ideas in terms of Star Wars. That's why I'm more excited than anything, after Episode Nine, of course, uh, for Ryan Johnson's own trilogy and the series that the Game of Thrones producers are going to be making because Ryan Johnson has said it's going to be a different part of the galaxy, it's going to feature new characters, has nothing to do with what we're familiar with. And I don't think the guys that are responsible for Game of Thrones have actually said what they their Star Wars series is going to be about. A lot of people are saying Knights of the Old Republic or something like that, which I'd be down for that. It'd be nice to go back 
far before the events of The Phantom Menace and just see what the Star Wars galaxy was like back then. She did mention one character in the film that I didn't mention beforehand, and that's Rio, which is this four-armed mammal-like alien voiced by Jon Favreau, who he himself is doing a Star Wars TV show that takes place between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, another thing that I'm actually looking forward to. And I didn't think his character was that memorable at all. He wasn't terrible, he didn't annoy me, but I just didn't feel much for him. And his character dies pretty early on, and when he dies I was just like, well, you got shot in the shoulder, that's not enough to really kill you. I mean, if Leia could walk off getting shot in the arm, and if Chewie could do the exact same thing, then... I, I don't know, I don't know. And then also Thandie Newton is in this movie, and she gets killed early on as well. She's a total waste there, so you just wasted two characters that we could have spent a lot of time with. Getting back to L3 though, I've already said a lot of my piece with her in my spoiler free review, but one element that I didn't mention because it's a spoiler, is that she has an insanely detailed Navi computer, and she gets taken out during the actual big heist that our heroes are trying to pull off. And so L3 is gone, like physically as a droid, but her conscience and the Navi computer is uploaded into the Falcon to where she actually becomes a part of the Falcon. And that's actually a throwback to an Empire Strikes Back when 3PO is trying to talk to the Falcon about how to fix the hyperdrive and whatnot, and I believe 3PO says something along the lines of, your Navi computer has such a very unique dialect. I don't remember the exact quote, which is pathetic considering that Empire is my favorite Star Wars film, but it's a neat little nod, I gotta say. When I saw this movie and it turned out that L3 was actually inserted into the Falcon, I kind of went, okay, but after thinking about it, it's like, you know, it's kind of neat. I'll give I'll give him that one. Okay, the next Stardust reaction is coming from Mars Girl, which I gotta admit right now, um, I've watched a lot of her videos back in the days of thatguywiththeglasses.com before it became Channel Awesome and it just turned to utter shit in the past few months. But I've always liked a lot of her videos. So, like, I really liked her entire review series of the Land Before Time movies. So when I got a notification on Stardust that said, Mars Girl is now following you, I was like, wait a minute, THE Mars Girl? Oh, it is. That's, that's cool. But anyway, here's what she has to say about Solo. A lot of people are going to give Solo a bit of unnecessary flack. I thought it was a perfectly decent movie. Now, it is kind of safe, and in a lot of ways it is kind of predictable, but there are decent action pieces within it, even though you already kind of know what the outcome is. And then there's one really shocking moment that I'm still kind of trying to process as to whether or not it was a good thing. If you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, give it a shot. It could be fun, actually. I completely agree with her 100%. The key word with Solo is that it's safe, because it's a prequel that focuses on a few characters that we already know the outcome of. There are a few people that we don't know the outcome of, like with Kira, who, out of the entire new cast, she's the only survivor. But this, this kind of plays into why I like Rogue One a lot more than this movie, is because we focused on a bunch of characters that we didn't know what was going to happen to them. It was a prequel where we didn't know what was going to happen to these main characters. But with this movie, we're just focusing on characters that we already know, we know what the outcome is going to be, so why should we put that much at risk? As for the incredibly shocking element that she was talking about, I'm going to play this reaction from R.A. Jedi Lantern before I say anything. Despite my concerns about this movie, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, the movie is Russia times and the villain's generic as hell, but it's a very good uh, space western movie and the characters' personalities help drive the film so it's not dull. I really loved Han Solo in this movie. I loved Lando. I loved all the side characters. I liked how sometimes in, in, in the space fights and the ship's return, it works as a scene transition. I thought that was really cool, but there's some shameful fan service at the end that had me like, WHAT?! You know, with that bit at the end, I just can't tell if he's giving his reaction to all the fan service, especially with the big thing in the end, or if somebody's towing his car away. I really can't tell because he's just looking off to the side. But anyway, um, yeah, the villain. Before I get into the big twist, I want to talk about Paul Bettany as the villain because I completely omitted him from my spoiler-free review, and that was because he didn't really leave that much of an impression on me. I saw the movie with my good friend Rachel Herrick, aka Adorkable Rachel. We were talking about it after the movie, and when watching Paul Bettany, I was just like, 
he's nothing. All I could think about when watching him was Vision, but with a bad attitude and not invincible, or, well, then again, Vision wasn't invincible, but you get the point what I'm saying. He didn't leave that much of an impression on me, so it's, I think he's, like, kind of the worst Star Wars villain. I mean, that's debatable because the prequels had some terrible villains outside of Palpatine, but speaking of the prequels, let's get into the big twist of the movie that has everybody confused. Either they love it, they hate it, or they just don't know what to feel. Darth Maul's in the movie. For what reason? I'm not entirely sure. Because when I saw the movie, it ends with Paul Bettany's character being killed, and Kira is now basically the gang leader, and she gets into contact with someone who has robot legs and is cloaked. And as soon as I heard the voice, the very first line of dialogue that this shadowy figure says, I thought to myself, that sounds like Sam Witwer as Darth Maul, but no. No, 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 they can't possibly do that. This movie cannot be so desperate to throw in Darth Maul. And then he takes off the hood, it's Darth Maul, and I'm like, what? What, what, why? Why? And I could just hear a big gasp in the crowd. And again, I was talking to Rachel about it when the movie ended. She was confused. She's a big Star Wars fan, as much as a fan as I am. But she's more knowledgeable about all the films. For me, I've watched The Clone Wars. I've seen Star Wars Rebels. I know that Darth Maul comes back to life. I know the cool character that he eventually becomes because of those two series. But for a movie-going audience... To them, Darth Maul is still dead, so when Darth Maul pops up in this movie, it just, it means nothing. For a movie-going audience, they're just so confused as to why this character even came back. Like, how did he survive? Because you gotta take into consideration, and I probably have said this on this channel before, movie-going audiences and television audiences are two completely different groups. Why do you think we don't see any characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Netflix Marvel shows in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least the movies? And considering that the Clone Wars and Rebels are animated, that's an even larger gap when it comes to the movie and TV audiences. So to bring back Darth Maul, it makes no sense at all. Let's take a character that hardcore Star Wars fans have known beforehand that made their debut in another film, Saw Gerrera. We were introduced to Saw Gerrera in The Clone Wars, and then he popped up in Rogue One, but Saw Gerrera had never appeared in a Star Wars movie beforehand, so to a movie-going audience, Saw Gerrera is just a friend of the Urso family, the one that brought up Jin Urso and became a rebel extremist. So he has his own identity in Rogue One. For those who have seen The Clone Wars and seen Star Wars Rebels, we know a little bit more about Saw Gerrera. Darth Maul was introduced in The Phantom Menace, and then he was brought back to life in The Clone Wars and permanently killed in Star Wars Rebels. So for Darth Maul, a character that was introduced in a film to pop up in a film with no explanation at all is bullshit. That twist really irritated me beyond belief. It's just something that I cannot... I can't endorse. I cannot get behind this twist at all, but... To wrap things up here, because I'm going on longer than I probably should be, I still like Solo Star Wars Story. I don't love it. Uh, again, I'm not going to be buying it day one when it comes out on Blu-ray, but I had fun with it. If you don't go in with high expectations, then it can be enjoyed, but really, it's just... it's forgettable. It's a bland Star Wars movie. And if we're going to do more of these one-shot films, I hope we get more movies based off new characters and new locations and eras rather than just staying within the Galactic Civil War era. We don't need to stay in this time period. Let's expand. Let's take the galaxy into new broader areas. So there you go. That's my spoiler review for Solo featuring your Stardust reactions. If you want your Stardust reaction featured in the next video, go ahead and download the app on your phone, create an account, follow me, RealMrRobinson, or go to the link down below, stardust.app.link slash RealMrRobinson. Just tag me in your reactions when I make the call. I'll go over the best reactions to feature on whatever video I'm doing next. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on spoilers. And don't forget to support my Patreon page follow me on social media, and until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.